application was geared towards the federal court. I applied it to the federal court. I'm telling you that. You're telling it back. I know that. I don't understand the question of the House. I'm sorry. Okay. What I'm going to go back is how you praise the Dudley Court and they got an award for excellence and everything. So let me ask you the question that you are being conferred to. Not Dudley. Okay. What is the greatest strength or the asset of the court for which you are applying and how would you preserve and improve it? So I'd have to take out that you're applying because you didn't apply to that. But let's just say, what's the greatest strength and asset of the Westboro Court? It's going to be the people. It's always the people. Well, I can show you another one that they put. That's what they put when you said the people. Okay. Let's go to the next one. What is the greatest challenge confronting the court and how would you address it? The greatest challenge is going to be staffing. And how would you address it? So I'd like to be able to hire two other people in the clerk's office and the clerk of the room to get another clerk magistrate in there. That's not to me. So for all these years, Conrad has been alone and they're bringing people in to help him out. And you're going to, do you have that authority to hire people? I do not know if I have that authority. I believe I do, but certainly I would get a trial court's advice on that. You know, you have taken promotion exams. Oh, first of all, you have an answer. When you went into the JNC, how many people were there? You didn't ask me the question. I'm sorry, I'm asking you now. How many were there, the members? Out of 21. So you asked me this question when we had lunch and I- Yeah, and now we're public. No, I know, and I know, and I said to you before, I did not count them because I was, I wasn't focused on them. I'm going to say 11 or 12. Okay. I did, I was not, I did not know the exact number because I did not count them. Okay, well, you know, my whole point is that, let's say it was 10. Okay. Okay, so 11 people voted for you, never saw you, never heard you, never got in touch with you, and gave you a lifetime. The difference with that position, a judge has to retire, so you can be there 100. You take them out sometimes, literally, in stretches, we know that, okay? But my question to you is, you have moved up and taken professional exams, and great, you've done well on those promotional exams. Did you ever, in this process, ever think, gee, someday, my goal is to be the chief of police in Shrewsbury? Is that the question, whether or not you're chief of police in Shrewsbury? So I've discussed this with my wife many times, and I've never aspired to be a chief of police in Shrewsbury. That being said, I've risen steadily through the ranks when I'm the number two person with 50 years of action, and my boss, thankfully, is still with me, and hopefully he'll be with me for 10 more years. But when you, through the years, you never thought that, I'm not talking about the chief, but you never thought, gee, I'd love to aspire someday to be the police chief. So the answer is, I have been told by many people along the way that you will be a great police chief, you will make a great police chief, and my wife can attest to it. You probably will, I think so. As my wife can attest to it, the one thing I know, I never thought that far out to a role. I just never, I never, I try to take one step in front of me, and I never thought that she could punish me on this. I never aspired to be a police chief, I just aspired to be the best person I was comfortable with. Okay, so May 3rd, you had the interview. No, no, you sent it in. And you had the interview, you said, in May. No, can I just clarify? So, Counselor, I applied on May 3rd. I worked on the application for the entire month of April. And so I applied on May 3rd. I received an email from the JNC roughly in mid-May. And then my JNC hearing was on June 4th. Wow. That's fast track. Sharon Casey did it in 12 days. But unlike you, it wasn't posted. It wasn't advertised. So it was a blind process for the public. No one could apply. This was posted. And so you got the deadline. But what I'm saying is that after, I've been here 20 years, okay? And after someone has gone to the JNC, I can show you. 
a year, 14 months, 15 months. Look at your year, your year. And, and you did it, and, and you, you, you it, it's amazing. You did it in a couple of months, three months. And um, don't you think that's what we should do here? When I can show you, I can show you so many over and over again. <coughs> yes, I've been here. No, I just got there. There's people that are still waiting that were interviewed by the JNC a year ago, and they still haven't come from. And they may never come from. They never come from. I mean, contact. They interviewed him and they sent him a letter right away and said, no, you're not going further. But with you, email, it through. Again, I want to know about this process. When you went to the JNC, did they say to you, no, we're not going to send you to the Duxbury, I mean, I mean, to the Westboro, but would you uh, would you consider um, Westboro? No. Well, then how did it happen? How are you here? Sure. So, um, so I went through the JNC process. Um, they um, so um, apparently they were only interviewed, and I was assigned to due diligence. Jennifer so Grasso would be my due diligence, and um, then I met with the, the um, governor's attorneys. And um, after that, I met with the lieutenant governor and governor's attorneys. But for what? What? They did not discuss it. You know what? This is really beyond anything in my 20 years. I'll tell you, I'm reading about, about how much you like ducks, but I can say how much you like um, Dudley. And, and I'll show you. So that's the court that I applied to. I know, but why didn't you send us some kind of supplementary and say, I am being sent to Westboro and, and I want to answer. 79 and 80 about Westboro, not Duxbury. Not, <laughs> not, not the Dudley. But let me say this. I, 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 I want to be respectful because I respect you. I think you've done a wonderful job as a police officer. I'm saying that, um, you know, you were coached for the lieutenant governor's son. They're friends, they're family friends. And I am asked to go. I am, well, I mean, the boys are friends, they go to school, the boys are close to them, all right, okay. So I'm saying, I am asked to vote for a career police officer, where I think Tom, I, I kind of count mean, three or four times he's been bypassed, but he keeps on applying. And this time he was, and he couldn't even get acting the third, was the third time. So I'm saying, you know, I'm here and I want to do justice. And it's not always popular to do the right thing. I like you. And I think you're a good police officer. And I have a lot of friends who are police officers. And I just, you know, I, I'm just baffled by, you know, you know, by this process. And, and um, now, how do you improve the efficiency of the delivery of justice to the court? How will you do that? I'll be there every day. And um, you said you have experience. You have experience, and I need that to issue written findings of fact, ruling of law, and orders, judgment. Can you do that? Yeah, I'm asking. What experience do you have that you're going to be able to issue written findings of fact, rulings of law, and orders of judgment? Can you do that? That's what I'm just saying. Anyway, you're going to have 
you can have uh, fellow offices bring in people. And um, is, is that going to be difficult for you? That you're going to be a good sign? No, not at all. Okay. Uh, how do you prepare for this year? Oh, yeah. Yeah. How have you prepared to be a clerk magistrate? 27 years is too soon. No. How have you prepared? How are you prepared? How have you been preparing? You want to be a clerk magistrate. So what do you do? Do you take courses? Do you take training? Do you what have you done to prepare to be a clerk magistrate? 27 years of my police work. Okay, that's all you have to say. Um, so, um, no, uh, I, you know, I, I just believe that when you went in, and they can say you can go to another court, there's, there's no, you know, they, they can do that, but, um, that, you know, it, it, it's obvious that they had someone in mind for the deputy court, and they said, look, apply for the, the restaurant because you're not going to get this. So that was a done deal, and we were waiting the other shift to fall. All I'm saying to you is that, I got, I got your commitment to go to the Dudley Court. This was all written that your dedication to the Dudley Court, and you have not in six years. I don't know before that, but I only know in six years you have gone <coughs> to the Westboro Court looking for a clerk magistrate on this. So um, I have, I have a lot of thinking to do on this because I like it, you know. But I look at people and I say, gee. You know, my daughters and sons are good people too, but you have to have the qualifications and experience, and that's experience of court that I'm looking for. And yes, we have had police, but it's only part of their resume for 27 years, you know? And um, now, what is the retirement age of the police department? So police officers can retire 55 years old and 32 years of service. Okay. So, you will be able to work to your 100. There is no age limit as a clerk magistrate. And so, um, you know, this is really, and I want to emphasize, it has nothing to do with not being a lawyer. I can't tell you, I, could, uh, I haven't had time, but I can make a list of all the ones, and every one of them has been great. And I know the judges in this room, I know the people who know those clerk magistrates, Insight, Tommy, Brian Law, all, Miriam, all of those, they were good, they were dedicated. When I voted for Miriam, who, who left, she, she's the last quick magistrate, she left in January. Do you know, she wasn't loyal, but she had 40 years in the Westboro Court. She started at 18 years old, and she worked there 30 years. I would vote for her over any lawyer with his book knowledge. That's the experience in court. You don't have to be a lawyer. It's the experience in that courthouse. So I, I am I'm giving you consideration. I really am. But I have to tell you, I, I've done, I, I do a lot of investigation. I am really full time. I thank you for coming out to our town. We met a long time. And um, I thank you for your service. I thank you for your community service. I think it's great. And I think it's great to have a friend all these years. That's wonderful. Thank you, Council. I appreciate it. Thank, so thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank Council Jubilee, I know Lisa Yip, Council Prayer, and Council Prayer. Thank you, Council Jubilee. I appreciate it. DLT, thank, thank you for being here. Awesome. I'm the only one of the Council that actually was not the Council Lieutenant. Um, so I appreciate your job. It was actually my favorite job, much better than the Chief. I appreciate all your service um, to Tom Shrewsbury. And I gotta tell you, uh, just reading this over quickly, you, you, you're the number two guy? Yeah. So I had half the department, you guys know, I had two captains, four lieutenants, five, six sergeants. That's amazing that you do everything with the two captains and my senior lieutenant. Um, so I also have to tell you that um, as a lawyer now, I've been to four clerks. As you did, I was a court liaison officer. I was a detective sergeant. You and I have been to court in criminal clerk's offices, more than 99.5% of every lawyer in the Commonwealth, except for Councilor Jubilee and, and Councilor Kennedy, talking about criminal clerk matters in the district court, and Councilor Casey, 
you have been to court more than 99, you, you, you don't need the district court. Not right. no. I so, all right, and, all right, I'm sorry. It comes where I am now. 99 now. So, no, seriously, um, 99.9% of the lawyers that I know and I've interacted with over my 26 years as a lawyer have not been to court nearly 10% of the time. So I get it. And I was in court a couple of weeks ago, I was just telling these guys, with an absolute jerk as a clerk. And he was a lawyer. So it doesn't matter to me whether you're a lawyer, not a lawyer. What matters to me is how you performed in the past. When I promoted people, it wasn't the guy who's been around the longest, it wasn't the guy who'd been signed and automatically been a lieutenant, it was the guy who did the best in his role. And you've absolutely, absolutely proven yourself. Um, the things that you've done are just remarkable. Um, you know, I read your search warrant affidavit where you solved a pharmacy robbery involving 22 victims held at gunpoint. Um, you're writing, obviously, you're an English major with technical writing. <laughs> so, uh, what an asset you have been to the, to the people of Shrewsbury. I also see that you did internal affairs. Is that something you do as a technical presenter? I do, yes, sir. That's not an easy job. Have some people been fired as a result of your findings? If they have been, yes. Has that been upheld by, by courts and arbitrators going forward? Yes, it was upheld by civil service. That's, that's the toughest job in the police department, so I respect you for that. Um, I see that administratively how you organize, you know, the staff, the caseload, you send people for training like any good supervisor would do, interviews, interrogation techniques, screened out cases, make sure the right cases go to the technical division. You were taught on the uh, Sex Offender Registry Board. You're the number two guy. I know what the number two guy is. The number, my number two guy made me look at it. He did, he did the brunt of every single thing. You don't have to talk about that, because if you don't get through it, you gotta go back and talk to the chief. But the number two guy in the police department is, I think, the most important position. You've done it, you've done it well. I've heard nothing but blowing things about you. I also love the fact that you're involved in the community, all the community policing programs and community meetings you did. Um, I think you're a remarkable candidate. Absolutely have my support this week. And uh, again, I thank you for your service to the Commonwealth. And I know that you're not going to treat people like my person just treated a couple of weeks ago in a local Bristol County book magistrate. So thank you for being here. Thank you. 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 To me, it's more not that you're not a good fellow, you are an excellent fellow. But to me, it's the perception that you <coughs> have when you walk into the courthouse. And I know you said that people won't know who you are because you're very different. Everybody knows in the courthouse who you are, where you came from. Probably how you got the job. You know what a clerk's been before he's, I mean, a judge before he's been a judge. He goes around the whole book. The whole thing. So, what is the perception that the public will have? And does it concern you that? They're scared, they're upset, probably never been to court. And they say, oh, the police are going to court. I said, well, where's the police going to court? And uh, I've got to go in this room to the policeman to put the complaint out again. I'm not going to get a ticket. How, how do you dispel that perception? It's not that you wouldn't be paid. The standard for recusal is not that there's some Is because the perception might be there. Only that, just maybe the perception. Is it not for a judge or a court to say, when judges recuse themselves, it's not because they've done anything wrong. It's they say, you know, public would think there's something here. And that's enough. <coughs> so how do you dispel that when people are going to come into Westbrook District Court and say, oh, uh, this is, I'm getting the way here. Yeah. It's a fair, it's, um, sorry, it's, it's a fair question. And so as a police officer, I typically don't be very functioning, and um, I do that every single day. And if I, 
were so uh, uh, learned, I would have to take that, and I'm going to take that to the pedestrian school, and I'm going to be fair and impartial every day. Um, people that know me know how I act, and yeah. if the people that come for a hearing don't know how you were, so they don't know what they do. They have no idea of that. They're there in the courthouse, their child, maybe. Oh, I had a birthday, they don't know how this is going to be fun. They hear that. So I, I think the point, <coughs> things they say, there's two problems the courts have. They have problems with the people on the other side of the court, and they have problems with the people on the other side of the court. So they They agree everything you do. <coughs> Watch everything you do. Drop dimes on you. You can't order anybody in that office to do anything. You can ask. You can ask. So that I think is the quandary of how you get by the standard. There was a clerk's office where when you walked in, it was a counter. It was a clerk's counter. And there was glass on the counter. And there had to be two or three hundred under the glass, and they were all up for this one. All of them. There was one picture of me giving them a toy. It was all of these pictures. So when somebody came in and said, I'm here for my hero, I said, Oh, my hero. Oh. He's a fair shake here. Hopefully, the They're going to get mad at you when you tell them to leave. 
some guy you worked with for 20 years with the sergeant who's trying to find his head, so there. He's been looking at you. What happened to our pal Joe, right? It's going to be hard for you to do that. Very hard. It's a challenge. It's going to be challenging. But if you don't do it, then the perception of being unfair is even greater. He's, he's a lifetime prisoner. He's kind of hanging out in the clerk's office. Going in the, in the heat fires, pulling stuff up and stuff. So you know what that people are going to say? What the hell bunch of people on that governor's council that voted this guy in office? And, and, oh, he missed us. I understand you've been in the clerk's hearing for a long time. Being in one, I've been in them for about 15 years. Being in one. Being a party is different from being a guy on the bench. Right? This whole different chapter. So part of the clerk's job is also keeping small things in order. You know, and I don't need any material, but it is important to me. That for some people. So I'll bring myself very, uh, very quick to the speed. I was studying the uh, small claims uh, law now. And uh, if I had any question about anything, uh, I came to an advisor and you know, made sure that they get some information. See, now one of the things about this place here, we hired If you walked in, You had no experience. And you said to the guy, yes. You went down to the mass general. You said, I'm interested in doctors. I want to talk to them. One guy says, I haven't done anything. You go down and then you go down to the other next office. The guy said, I've done 2,500. 2,500. So to me, courthouses are equally as important as hospitals or doctors. Because a decision by you can hurt someone. Issuing a complaint for a young man or woman that prevents them from becoming a nurse or going into one of the academies or a whole lot of other academies are close to them. As you said, issue. Right? Yes. So, to me, Sit here, you should say, I'm going to go. You've been at this thing now since when? What, May? The popular application of May? Yeah. You should have been studying right from May? Yeah, I've been. So you've been studying? I've been reading everything I possibly can about the health industry and making myself more knowledgeable about the subject. And I've reached out to good people. Judge Eustace is here. Thousands of companies out there. I've talked to numerous court magistrates about the processes. I guarantee you that if I'm confirmed, I'm going to do a great job. I'm going to be very proud of everything. And now everybody will be proud of the process. The office. I had a half a dollar for every candidate that said yes. And they probably did. Because they leave 
scared. You know what they say? I'll do what I want. Talk to them. They go to the company. They're gone. They're out of my life. You know what? You're right. Because I know clerks. This system, it shouldn't be clerks. They're awful to people. They're awful to their employees. They're awful to their assistant clerks. But they're sitting there, right? And they sat in your chair there and said to the clerks, I can make a life. Believe me. Trust me. <coughs> they all said that. Um, No, I know I know what you said, I wanna say that. You're helping people now. show cards here. try to let that carry on as much as I possibly can. Um, you indicated uh, that you have to create a search process. So if you put a search on my property, yes. so many X out on XXX Detective XXX Can I explain? Yeah, you can, but before you explain it, this is what you hand to a clerk magistrate, right? Right? So obviously uh, that would not be exactly what I'm getting. <laughs> this is it, man. 
affidavit for the search warrant. The search warrant has what you want to search, the address, the people, whatever. The affidavit is the meter. Why I should give you probable cause to go search, right? Okay. One, two, three, and that. You signed it. It is so simple to keep your brother with you. Been around the system. Who the person is. And it's, it sounds good, looks good, but I look at these. You know, if I didn't know that if I if the fellow's name was an IDC, he probably guess who they got for you. So, so the X's. Was the was a name on there? Even that, I don't know if that gives you more than Okay, as you know, you don't say in it like provided significant intelligence. What intelligence? How am I as a clear magistrate going to say oh, significant intelligence? What? What? What, what is the significant intelligence? You don't tell me. But anyway, I think mean, that's, that's, that's okay. So I'm, I'm squared away on here. Uh, veils. We you talked about veils, right? And you know that there's a case that came down from the Supreme Court that says you shouldn't hold them.
determine whether they get the money or not. You can just get the person has the money. Um, the Supreme Court says you, can, you can't put faith in somebody if you don't have the money. I would put a PR in on the person. <laughs> Epstein got off with that guy. He did all those terrible crimes. Huh? Um, yeah. Is he presumed innocent? My hope, yes. What, what in your opinion, is probably the problem? I think we were about out of the time. Most people go down. For some reason, they either don't know about it or miss a date or something like that. But it wasn't in the city. I'm not sure. The discretion is required in front of the police officer.
gives the greatest strength. Give the strength. 